Welcome to the Strange Cast, podcast made by strangers for strangers. I'm Ryan. I'm Kalis. I'm Nicole. And we're the Strange Cast. And that was our mm-hmm. and that was our mm-hmm. intro again. As always. Sexy. sexy intro. In this episode, we'll be discussing um, some strange news, as always, and um, I have a prepared story. Just another murderer I was going to talk to you guys about um, that you've heard of before, but but you know, let's let's wait till let's wait till we get to the news after the news, and we'll we'll discuss the murderer. Well, okay. uh, first things first. What have you guys been up to? Well, I've been stuck at work for two days. Oh, you guys had like a blizzard or something, huh? <laughs> yeah. Aww. 40 inches of snow, couldn't open the door. Um, I was the only person on staff. Um, well, that's not true, but I was the only person in my with my job title um, to be on staff. For I was I went to work early at 1:30 on Friday, and I didn't leave till 8 o'clock on Sunday. That's it. That kind of sucks. <laughs> Luckily, no emergencies happened, but to, you know, there was it just felt like there was no help. It, it, at one point, you're like, I think people are making up stories about why they can't come in, but they're not. It was just like streets aren't being plowed and it wasn't like oh so what you didn't get that much no i mean like you couldn't like cars could trucks couldn't get through it's when when people are like oh they didn't plow my street it's like it's not like oh my car can't make it it's snow it's like they they didn't plow my street there's a wall like i can't do anything you can't drive through it yeah i guess there was a fine in montana i think is the state and if you're driving in a blizzard you'd be fined and they said they didn't implement that in new york and and you know the north northeast and so then they showed a picture of like just tons of cars in the middle of the street covered in snow yeah so massachusetts massachusetts not excuse me i said montana oh yeah oh did you I did, but I, I meant I didn't Massachusetts. Even catch that. Yeah, Massachusetts, they would, uh, it's up to a year in prison if you were caught on the road in a car. Oh my God. In Connecticut, it was a $500 fine, unless you were in healthcare or healthcare related, like you, unless it was like, you know, a matter of life and death. So a lot of the people that I work with are essential staff because if they're not there, people get hurt, you know? So, you know, if you were caught, you'd have to explain why you were on the road. The cars that were abandoned, though, I was actually just telling Nicole this. The snow was coming down so fast that it was it was never heavy. It was never like big snowflakes. It was just really, really fast. So like, it was this flash storm that happened, and people were just they, their cars were getting stuck, so they were abandoning them. And um, by the time you know they got to wherever they're going, their car was under snow. So then now you have the plows that they, they, the plows want to plow the street, but they can't cause there's abandoned cars, but you can't move the car because there's too much snow. So that's, that's why everyone's kind of stuck. One of the biggest problems was being on the road. So they're like, the governor's like, you can't drive. And if you do drive, it's a fine because you're just fucking this up for everyone else. Exactly. A year in prison though. That's pretty hard. I didn't man. believe it. I didn't believe it. My girlfriend lives in Boston and she said that, and I said, I, I don't think that's legal. A year in prison does not fit the, the crime. You know, it just didn't make sense. Well, I thought what it was was like any executive order that's ignored is just automatically a, a year in prison. But if you were to if you were to go before a judge, they would bring that sentence down, I would think. I would hope so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Damn, though. Fuck. That's harsh. So very harsh. Today, it rained, and the temperature went up. So the temperature goes up, it rains. The snow is melting. The rain is coming down. It is foggy as shit. You can't see too. There's there's zero um, visibility in some places in Connecticut. You you don't even know where you're going, and then you end up in a snowbank. Yeah. Two weekends in a row, I had terrible news. We got a little bit of rain down here. It's kind of troublesome. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, put you in a bad mood. I bet. Yeah. I bet. All right. Right. Ryan texted me the other night and said, um, I, I've been stuck at work for this long, you know, and I just now got home. It's snowing so much. I don't know what's going on. I was getting I was loopy, like, yeah. dude. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it rained here like two nights ago for maybe 20 minutes, and then it stopped, and that was it. Oh. It hadn't rained since. It's, it's supposed to rain tomorrow, but it probably won't. 20 whole minutes? What did you guys do? Did you close down the stop and shop? 
It was actually one in the morning, so didn't, my grandfather oh. didn't even know it rained. Like I told him the next day, he was like, "It did not rain because <laughs> it was so it was so warm the next morning. It evaporated almost everything. It you you would you would not believe how dry it is down here. It is very I, I hate it. I want to move somewhere where there like Colorado is my ideal place. It just it rains in the spring in the summer and it lightly snows in the fall and the winter. Colorado, like, like South Colorado, yeah. Oh, it's high desert. I guess I don't know. It doesn't. It, it's cold, but it doesn't snow. I need a, a whole beach. Lot. I always need to live near a beach. I agree, really, man. I, I I love the beach. I as soon as I get my car back, I'm going to. That's the first place I'm going. My my dog. I have a border collie, and she loves to play fetch. I love going to open bodies of water and throwing. She for some reason this dog loves the water, and I just love throwing the ball in the water. She'll swim out there and grab it. She loved the beach the last time I took her. I think I've taken her twice now, and. I just wish I could go more. Like, I, you know, and our Texas coast sucks too. I mean, that's the Gulf of Mexico. It's brown, dirty ass water. I mean, it's basically oil at this point, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's not that bad. I mean, I don't. It doesn't look black. No, anything, I mean from the spill. I, I can't say that I've seen any effects of that. I mean, I would think that's close. I think I would think that's like it's it's really far south, but it's not as far southeast as you could go in Texas. So I, I would think if you would see any, and I mean, I don't even know that. If you could still go out there, and how much oil is still out there, just visible? I have no idea. I usually, I, think yeah, I wouldn't think it's still like visible after this long. But I mean, what do y'all's beaches look like? I live on the Long Island Sound, so if you think your Gulf of Mexico looks like shit, I, I, <laughs> we have yeah. there's a shit plant next to my house. Well, not next to it, but um, actually, Nicole, the, the that movie, what's it called? Another Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where that's yep. that where that's filmed. There's a. Uh, um, sewage processing plant so all the all the shit and piss goes in there and then they whatever they do to it and they release it back into the sound and then everyone goes swimming in it i, I live in i live in south carolina but i'm in the i'm in what's called the piedmont of the blue ridge mountains and uh so i'm i'm in the northern part of the state but um just four hours away is uh charleston and myrtle beach and if you want to go about six hours you can go to some really nice beaches in north carolina along the the outer banks are really nice so mm. there's some nice beaches down here anyway whatever all right let's uh, let's get to the news again all right are we ready news time time for the news kayla's play the all right guys play the intro kayla's So, you guys are on Reddit, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I can't stand running into those those holier than thou UK people who talk about how shitty America is, and it's like, yeah, you know, I believe in people respectfully giving discourse or disapproving of of some kind of U.S. international policy or something like that. But I hate it when they make fun of like internal affairs, like cops or anything like that. It gets really, it gets on my nerves because, for one thing, they don't live here, so they don't, they can't vote, so they have no, no, op- their opinion doesn't matter to me. But here's this story that really just really exemplifies why we are still better than our British ancestors. Are you ready? Okay. British horse meat scandal. Wow. That's Tesco, great. which is like a brand name in in the UK, Tesco reveals sixty percent content in every dish. Oh my god. No, it's got meat in it and 60% of the meat is horse meat. Now, what are they what's the is it what is it steaks, burgers, what is it? Um well the picture that they have in this particular news article is spaghetti bologna. So it's it's like ground meat with with spaghetti sauce and noodles, but it's it's not just this. It's What the fuck are they time. eating over there? What is that? I don't It look it just looks like spaghetti to me. Okay. It's just you know, ground beef spaghetti. But like, it's not just Tesco. Apparently, it's a widespread problem among any sort of processed meat. So not, it's not the meat that you're going to the butcher to get. You know what I mean? It's the kind of meat that goes to a, a second party and they make something out of it and then they, they serve it back to the public. So if I, wanted, if I wanted a horse burger in the UK, where would I go? McDonald's or a restaurant? 
You would get it from Tesco, apparently. You, you would go to... Oh, to... it's like a... Okay, I get what you're saying now. Gotcha. I just want to know, do either of you find it morally reprehensible to eat a horse? I don't... I Here's the thing. I'm I'm like anti-PETA. I'm, I'm not... I'm not a militant steak eater. I'm not a big eat meat eater because personally, I don't like eating too much meat in one week because I'm a small person and it takes a long time for me to digest it. It makes me tired. That's why you're bisexual too. And it's also why I'm bisexual. I go both ways. But I, the thing is, it's like, I, I know that as a species, we would not be where we are without domesticated cattle. It's just not possible for us to be where we are now without having mastered that skill. So I'm all for eating meat. I don't give a shit. But the thing is, is that this, this, these horses were not raised to be meat. You know what I mean? Well, then where are they getting these horses? I, they don't know. They don't know where the fucking meat came from. It's just in, it's mixed in with Who the said they meat. don't know? Tesla? Tesco. Tesco? The, the company that serves these meals. They're like, I don't know how a horse got in there. They have no idea because they buy the beef from other people. They brought they buy the ground beef from from butchers, from you know commercial butchers, and apparently the butchers have been putting horses into this mix. <laughs> that is so weird. I know. So this is this is just like the Tesco, this frozen dinner thing. I doubt anyone's complaining about the taste. I'm sure it tastes wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's delicious. But the thing is, is like it's unregulated. It's completely, it's re- reprehensible because you're introducing all sorts of, I mean, these horses don't necessarily have to have the same kind of disease checks. Uh, They're not, you know, they could be eating all sorts of uh, fungal infested uh, hay. You, you have no idea where this, this horse meat came from is the problem. It's not that it's morally reprehensible. It's that they don't, nobody sells horse meat, so it's unregulated. And they're adding it to the beef to bulk it up so they can cut costs. Wow. Isn't that sick? I forgot what it was. It, was, it might have been Prop 8 in California where they were going to do that thing. Where No, Prop 8 was the gay thing, wasn't it? Um, I think Prop 9 was marijuana, right? There was one of them, and it was, it was for finding out what you're putting in your food. Not It was just, it wasn't like... Oh, they wanted just, to list GMO on stuff. Exactly. And yeah. they they voted it down. And it was because certain companies like Monsanto and, you know, they, oh, they had a bunch of lobbyists that were able to raise the money for it. So evil, evil. That's that's the epitome of evil. Right now, Monsanto. The, the only issue I really have with this is that, like, you should know what you're eating. Yeah. I well, like what you're saying, Kalis, what they were voting for. If if it's a horse, at least let me, tell me I'm eating a horse. You know, I, I guess I guess in the long run, it doesn't really matter because you're eating meat. You know, like, what does it matter if it came from a horse or a cow? But it's just, I guess you have some ethical responsibility to be like, hey, just so you know, you're eating a horse. I don't think anybody cares that it's horse. Like, I don't think, there's no public outrage of like, oh my God, I just ate a horse. Ew. It's not that. It's that they they could potentially make people a lot of sick. How many, or a lot of- how many horses are there in the UK that they could splice in horse meat with Cows. Well, think of it this way. Horses are cheaper than cattle. Yeah. My friend and I just talked about this recently, and that's exactly what he said. He said, yeah. he, he said, uh, no, no, he said the opposite. He said, you could get a cow. Well, for, on... Cows are like really cheap. Horses are like, I, I, when's the last time you could buy a yeah. horse? They're like 40 grand. Whereas like a cow is like 50 bucks. So like the fact that they're like bulking it up with horse meat, it's like, it sounds like they're losing out. That's not necessarily true. It depends on the horse because a horse, a horse lives for about 20 something years. Mm-hmm. And after a certain age, after about, after they're about maybe 15, you can't really ride them anymore. All you're going to do is hurt <laughs> so them. They're just meat. <laughs> they're, they're basically just meat, but nobody uses them as meat. Oh no, they do. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a horse you can't sell that nobody can ride. He's just eating grass and taking up space and, and not making you any money. And I only know this because my my good friend has a horse that she's had since she was a little girl. And she, she can't do anything with it. She's just this mean, bitter little pony that you, you can't ride her because she's mean. And she doesn't do any work. She's not a workhorse. So she just takes up space in, in somebody's oh, barn. I mean, that's like having a cat. It's just like a big cat or a big dog. 
I mean, you can't ride a cat. You can't ride a dog. You're just like, I'm going to feed it and talk to it or whatever you do. All right. So, you know what? That's why we're better than you. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure we we must have horse meat in our burgers. We should start testing. I'm sure we we have. So, I, I must have missed something after the election. I kind of stopped paying attention. But you guys probably heard about this. Um, Hillary Clinton... Hillary Clinton's no longer the Secretary of State. Yeah, she had like a no. stroke or something. Did you know this? Well, but I didn't think that was why she retired. I thought she just wanted to retire. I mean, she recovered from that. She had like a blood clot in her head. <laughs> Did she really? Yeah. I, I don't remember quite what it was, but anyway, she's better now, and she just said she's retiring from politics, but honestly, I still think she's going to run in the 2016 election. Nah, she's not. I think, I think she you should. You think so? Nah. So, Nicole, the story is that she... No, that's not the story. <laughs> oh, that's why I was like, okay, what's the weird... All right, go ahead. That's, that's, not, the, that's not the story. The story is different. But I, I, I came across the story. I was like, John Kerry is the Secretary of State since yeah. fucking war. But um, he gave his first press conference as Secretary of State, and he was, he was asked to... Sp- Speak a bit of French, please. And he said, not today. He said, not today in French? No. He he refused to speak French at his first press conference. Is that like a thing that they do during their first press conference? Why is that even a question? Does he speak French? He speaks French, and he was known for it while he was running for president. Oh, so maybe it's like a, maybe he said like, not today is like a, I'm not fucking, don't puppet yeah, he me. Said, he said, not today. I've got to refresh myself on that. Oh, oh, yeah. But the thing is, like, he just got back from meeting with his Canadian counterpart. So it was like, hey, what's going on? Maybe you should talk to us a little bit in French. So it was, I don't know who asked the question, but it was, it might have been, a, it might have been somebody from, like, Quebec or something, you know? Yeah. I love but, you. So he's like, he's like, no. And that's French for no. Yeah. Well, so I just. I just thought it was weird that it was news. Like it's a, it's like twenty paragraphs talking about how he refused to speak French. We're talking about it. But we're the strange cast. We'll talk about anything. <laughs> What's he? <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was, I was gonna segue. Go on. Segue. <laughs> oh, well, let's make that. Let's make that the new segue. When I, when one of us says segue, just do it. <laughs> That's not how segways work. Segway. A segway is supposed to be like subtle and and has a little finesse to it. Segway. And you fuck it up all the time. I edit it. I'll segway every fucking segway you have. Segway. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Segway. Ah, <laughs> uh, I think I should slow down on the wine. Mm. Me too. But go ahead. Go on. Segway. Segway. Speaking of talking about anything, bacon enthusiasts converge on Iowa. Do you see? Festival. Bacon enthusiasts? I like bacon. Yeah, there's a huge world festival. Oh, bacon. What do you think I said? Bacon. Like Master Bacon. Oh, bacon. No, (laughs) bacon. Come on, it's a fishing festival. No, bacon enthusiasts converge on Iowa for festival. This is actually kind of amazing. Yeah, it's just all kinds of different bacon recipes. So it's actually like the the world's largest bacon festival. And they have several hundred different vendors with all kinds of different um, uh, recipes. And you just, I guess you, you know, any kind, like any other festival, you pay to get in. And they have thousands upon thousands of people come out and you just go around tasting all kinds of bacon. It's so weird that you say that there's so many different recipes for bacon when it just sounds like this this bacon's made with pig. This one is with horse. That's it's just like maybe it is made with horse. It's just it'd be it I feel like it'd be better to say for for a bacon and you know a a bacon fest to say there's so many different flavors of it bacon, but recipes is like Well, it's not just flavors of bacon, like it's 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 things made with bacon like, you know, potato chunks with cheese and wrapped in bacon and there's all kinds oh, of Oh, okay. I get what you're okay. I thought it was just Yeah. I thought it was just like a big <laughs> breakfast that everyone was having. It's not just for breakfast anymore, you guys. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> they see that's why that's why they need to have festivals like this to to just nip those kinds of misconceptions in the bud. I mean, how many different recipes can you get? I don't know. Well, I I want to try horse bacon because apparently horse is pretty fucking good. So apparently nobody fucking knew. If you can make horse bacon, could you make human bacon? 
Yes, uh, it'd be off the ribs, right? It'd be the lower. No, that's the spare ribs. I don't know. It'd be around there somewhere. I'm totally want to eat a human before I die. Every time we have a strange cast episode, I just I can't help but fantasize about just having a good like ribs of a human <laughs> or a nice. I don't know. Is it just me? Would you? Would you? No, kill I definitely. Would you eat a dead person or a live a person that you killed yourself or a person that you found that was dead? I would never eat someone I found dead. Okay. Because. But you- <laughs> I would eat somebody who don who specifically donated their body to be cooked. So like yeah, but, a prisoner or somebody who donated their body to science or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but you don't want to eat like an eighty five year old man who donated his body to science. Fuck that. I want like a no. I want, like a, like, I want like a we're fucking talking like we're talking like death row inmates, like thirty five years old, been working the yard and right. he's... I'm talking about HGH taken baseball player a fucking. Yeah. Throw them in the smoke. Yeah. You guys might not agree with this, but eating another guy sounds kind of gay. Well, I'm going <laughs> to eat his dick. <laughs> I'd like to eat a girl. I'd like to eat a guy. Is that okay? Is that, is that acceptable? Like a really buff girl. Like <laughs> A really buff girl. You want the manliest woman you can find, and you're just saying that it's that. not. I didn't say that. I did not say that. I just, uh, the most um, physically fit woman I could find. I didn't say manly woman. That would be, that would defeat the purpose. Yeah, yeah. You'd eat the dick right off her, wouldn't you? I might. I don't know how tasty the dick you might be. Put it on a stick and and throw it over a campfire. Don't lie. If I have to. Yeah. But okay, so I don't even remember the story at this point because now the wine is talking. Bacon. Bacon. Oh, right. Yeah. Does Iowa have anything to do with bacon? Ugh. There's nothing to do. Yeah, but except bacon. Yeah, but there's a lot of there's nothing to do in other states too, like Oklahoma. Like, what the fuck did you do there? Nothing. They're racist there. If racism can be a hobby, then hey, that's what they do there. Th- their state already looks like a skillet for bacon. <laughs> hey, fun fact. Uh, Oklahoma puts less alcohol in their beer. Fuck Oklahoma. Does that Oklahoma- mean, Wait, does that mean like distilleries have to have an Oklahoma sample? Or do they just not allow certain percentages? Well, okay, let me put it to you this way. If you wanted to get drunk in Oklahoma, you'd have a hard time. You'd need to come down to Texas where the beer has a higher alcohol content. No, but the, right. But I'm, what I'm saying is, does their Bud Light have less alcohol content than your Bud Light? Or do yes. they, or can you, no. The beer in Oklahoma has less alcohol content in it. It's illegal. Well, speaking of worldwide. Segway. Um, <laughs> Segway. Uh, Jason Lewis circumvent, circum. The circumnavigated. Oh. Jason Lewis circumnavigated the world, the entire globe, and get, guess how long it took him? Eighty days. Nope. Thirteen 80. fucking years. Well, what the fuck was he doing? He 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 started off in a human power pedal boat. So he circum he circumnavigated the globe. By human power alone, and it took him 13 years. So did he give up for a few years? I mean, he he didn't give up. He actually, um, at one point in, I'm trying to find the year. They made it from. They started off in Europe, and they made it to Miami, originally, in 111 days, and then he started to continue his journey on rollerblades until he was hit by a drunk driver breaking both his legs. For for so eleven he, years. <laughs> no, for for nine months, and then he continued to San Francisco, and then back on to the Pacific to Hawaii, and then from Hawaii to Asia, and then from Asia to, back to the Grand Meridian. So, all that. That's like when when you get drunk or high, and you're talking with your buddies or your friends, and you're like, "How long do you think it would take to circumnavigate the globe in a paddle boat?" And sure enough, if you factor in drunk driving, 13 years. Yeah, it, it's not just a paddle boat. I know, and the rollerblades and the. Do you remember? Do you remember that chick that um? I feel I just feel like that's like the worst thing that can happen. Like, like I'm gonna rollerblade. I'm rollerblading across the world, and then you get hit by a drunk driver. Like Jesus, like obviously whatever force is out there, if there is any, is stopping me from getting across right. the fucking world. But do you remember that the girl? It was in the 90s, who um. She was going to fly our plane around the world and crash within like 13 days and, and was dead. Are you talking about Amelia Earhart? No, not Amelia Earhart. It was in the, ni- the 1990s. 
Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Not the 1890s. Kayla's come Which, back to us. Sorry, I just heard woman flying plane, and that's exactly where my mind went. No, but do you, Nicole, do you know who I'm talking about? No, I don't remember that. Oh, shit. I don't remember her name. She was 13 years well, old. She was going to be the youngest person to fly oh, around the world. Or maybe it was just maybe it was just across the U.S. But she like it was like, oh, we're, they were so proud of her. She was on like Good Morning America, you know, like and now she's on Unsolved Mysteries. It's just like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> it's like I'm going to pat I'm going to paddle my way around the world and, and rollerblade drunk driver. It's it's like of all the people that try and accomplish something, the weirdest shit happens to them. Anyway, Segway. so to bring it a little closer to home, Ryan actually sent this to me, but I'm surprised I didn't hear about it before because I, I don't live too far away from North Carolina State University. It's probably about two and a half hours away from where I live. Tea part. Yeah. Tea party students to protest butt plug giveaway. Kayla's. What the heck is that? <laughs> I tried to read this story. I hope you did, Nicole, because I tried to read it. I had to read it because I was like, I can't go into this not knowing what we're talking about. Here's the thing. The president went on to the president of the school went on to explain why there's a butt plug that was paid for by the school being given away to students. Okay, so the event is called Dirty Bingo and it's scheduled for February 12th today uh, or later today or uh, a few days ago if you're listening. Well, or or (laughs) Kayla's it's tomorrow. For Kayla's is tomorrow. The, the, Uni- the Union Activities Board purchased the sex toys as prizes for Dirty Bingo. And the purpose of the event was to find an innovative and entertaining way to talk about sex and sex, sex education. So there, it's not, there's not just a butt plug. There's six dildos. There's a bunch of condoms. There's Fifty Shades of Grey, which is all about bestiality. There's like Uh, lube there's lingerie there's all kinds of other kinds of toys but among them this is this is okay among them is a butt plug okay so then the moral majority which is neither uh comes in and is like oh my god butt plugs you guys are fucking disgusting this is not how you talk about sex with college students Uh." so they sounded like college students no, and here's the thing. This is very, this is very close to where I live. I can, t- I'm in these people's heads. I totally understand why they're so fucking flabbergasted. It's not because they're talking about sex. It really is because that there's a butt plug involved. Because, as Kayla's can, can, uh, you know, you can back me up on this. <laughs> the Bible Uh-oh. hates bags. I hate bags so fucking much. The Bible hates and- bags. Clearly, any, anybody who uses a butt plug is just a raging homosexual because straight men don't use it for personal pleasure or anything like that, and women certainly don't get off on it. From what I know about butt plugs, you really, women, well, or I guess guys too, um, place them in their their butt so that it stretches it out so that they can have anal sex. It's not necessarily for pleasure, a butt plug. No, they, they're butt plugs are were initially marketed true towards homosexual men and it's for pleasure and really? yeah it probably does help you stretch out a little bit so you can have anal sex that's but that's probably a secondary that's a, that's incidental <laughs> to the main goal of getting off it's sometimes it's prefi- prescribed for its side effects is what you're saying yeah sometimes but the the butt plug is shaped differently than a dildo. A dildo is very phallic, and a butt plug is specifically designed for anal play. So it's it's tailored. It looks, oh my god, is that a fucking flashlight? There's a flashlight in there. It looks. What the fuck? A butt plug looks like a an Easter Island head. We're getting drunk and segue. Uh, from the UK, a woman is fine for bedazzling her court ordered ankle monitor. Ankle monitor. Be dazzled. Kalis, your thoughts. Why is that illegal? So, Kalis, it's not... Yes. Technically, it's not illegal. This girl, I happened to read this story, and she looked it up. She looked at the pamphlet, apparently, that comes with the ankle bracelet. It comes with, like, instructions, an instruction manual. And um, 
it doesn't say anywhere in there that you can't tamper with it or you can't um I'm not, no you can't tamper with it but it doesn't say anywhere that you can't decorate it so this lady this this woman okay. who bedazzled it was watching like an episode of some weird fucking UK like show that promotes bedazzling apparently so she gets this crazy idea fuck it I'll do I'll do that to mine I'm under house arrest I got nothing else to do so she does it then the makers take her into court and say she tampered with it. And she's like, I didn't really tamper with it. I just decorated it. And that's that's pretty much the story. Um, the weird thing is, though, that I found, if you look at a picture of her, you think you'd find like a club, like a clubbing chick. You'd think she'd be good looking, you know? But she's, okay. she's really not. She's like, you're like, that's probably the well, best. come on. Hang on. Let's be fair. She's good looking for a British chick. Okay. I guess, but she's a little heavy set, and and I have nothing against heavy set women. She's just like she doesn't wear it well. When I think about British women, I think about uh, I don't know, like Emma Watson. I mean, if she's like everything downhill from there is. No, I mean, all right. So think about an American, uh, Italian club chick. Think about like a no. I don't want to say Snooky because she's she's not that ugly. But like, think about like a a Jersey Shore woman, right? When Is I she short, round, and brown. Yeah, not round. Okay. She's not she. So anyway, just think about like a good looking Jersey Shore, like Jay Wow. I can't believe I even know that name. I've never even watched the show. But I'm thinking a a girl who's gonna be dazzle her ankle bracelet. It's gonna be good looking, and she's just you. You look at it and you go, God damn, it's like. That's the sexiest thing on you is the fucking ankle bracelet. She's not a looker. I gotta see it too. Rebecca, what the fuck is her name? Rebecca Gallant. Gallant. Oh, it's just like you're like, oh, you're so close. But what's up with that old ass Adidas jacket that you're wearing? She's British. You know what? You're right. She is British. You thought she was. You thought we were lying. I I didn't believe you there for a minute. Hey, you know what? I I wouldn't. I would, I'd dick her down. I don't <laughs> you just that. said, you Freudian slipped and said, I wouldn't, fu-. you were about to say, I wouldn't fuck her. No, no, no. I was going to say, I wouldn't kick her out of bed for eating crackers, but then I decided to say. <laughs> what, does that mean? That I, what does that mean? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, <laughs> well, eating crackers. It's a Texas thing. Make- it's got to be a Texas thing. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Really? Yeah. I mean, eating crackers in bed would cause a lot of crumbs. You could substitute it for anything that would cause crumbs, but you wouldn't you wouldn't kick them out of bed for doing something that's that inconsiderate in your bed because you want to also have sex with them. So, I don't I don't know that it's so much a Texas thing, but yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, cuz I think I I would kick her out for eating crackers in bed because she's already kind of big. Right. Okay. Well, uh I I have no problem with big girls. Honestly, I that girl that I, we I showed y'all from OK Cupid. I ended up having sex with her a couple times. <laughs> really? Yes, um, three or four times. And she's supposed to she moved away, but she's gonna come back at some point. So. Aww. You're you're the subplot in our in our podcast. Um. So wait, what were we talking about? Uh, how you would let this girl eat in bed? Yes. Yeah. Okay. No. That but, expression. I've heard that expression before. It's a southern expression. expression. Yeah. It doesn't have to be crackers. It can be cookies or whatever. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't kick her out of bed for eating crackers. It's just like a, you know, she's a, she's attractive enough that if she's eating in bed and making a mess, I'm okay with it. Uh, I don't know. You like fat chicks. Just say it. No, 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 no. I, I don't mean that at all because that's not true. Like He's not going to discriminate against them just because they're big. I, I like, I, I really. Some people, a lot of people would. I, I really, I'm, I'm trying to say thing, is that a southern thing, maybe? No, no, no. I, I hear, I don't know. I don't find too many people are giving big girls a chance. And I mean, that's where I'm like, it's it's an open market, really. I mean. We have a lot of big girls up here that are really awesome. I mean, like, good personalities. Well, that's great. I mean, that also sounds fucking awesome. I think I, the I, New England personality is the most charming most most attractive out of the American personalities that we have, if you're going to go by region, because the New Englanders are very forthright, and they're they're not going to bullshit you. Yeah, we're we're honest. Yeah. We're honest. Yeah, not just honest, but blunt, which I like. I don't think any and, New Englander would say that they're blunt, though. 
that's the weird thing yeah. about it. Yeah, I don't... Not. but see, that's the thing about Southern culture is everyone's very two-faced and real, real sweet to your face, and then they'll stab you in the back like in the same sentence. It's crazy. Mm. Let's get through the fucking yeah. I know. News, there's guys. you said there's twelve stories, and we've only gone through like four. There's only a couple more. The two sto- the t- the two stories that are next are related, so I'm just going to do them together. Segway. First, there's a seven year old playing an imaginary game at school and gets suspended for real. Mm-hmm. And this took place in Colorado. Second grader has been suspended from school for a make believe game he was playing about. Saving the world. Ugh, what an ass. Get rid of him. So he, I don't know, he was, he was playing out this game on the, on the playground. Uh, I guess a few people saw him and heard what he was saying. So I guess it sounded threatening in some way. And they didn't really understand that he was like trying to be the good guy in a bad situation. Because I guess he was playing by himself. I wonder why. Only child. Probably. Um... So he gets suspended from school because he was saving the world, and that's that's no way to promote. That's how that's how evil villains are formed, really. Yeah, I don't really, I don't, I don't get their position because they don't really talk about their position. But it is, it's Fox Denver, so who knows? I think wasn't it that he threw grenades in a, um, he threw grenade, he threw pretend grenades in a box that oh. the, the box contained pure evil. And um, they have a zero tolerance policy with violence. And then someone said, uh, I happen to read the story because I was really interested in it. And one of the or maybe it was his mother or his father said, I don't really think you can practice so much tolerance towards violence with four year olds. Like, I don't think that's possible. So they they like suspended them and they asked the parents what's up. And the parents are like, they're, they're suspending them for shit that you can't stop four year olds from doing. It's, um, that's what, that's what I was saying. I don't understand the position of the school. So I would understand if he was actually like, you know, pushing his idea onto other people and, and right. being, being fake violent towards other people and, and the other, the other children didn't understand that it was a game. I could see that, but that's not what was happening. He was playing by himself, which is sad. And then they suspend him for it whatever it's like the safest thing you can do is play by yourself you're like i'm not even pretending to kill anyone that's i'm just just leave me alone and they're like suspended and you're like god damn it i can't even have privacy i can't even like pretend to face evil by myself right well this next story is related in that a three-year-old south carolina boy was killed after mistaking a pink handgun for a toy and I'm looking at a picture of this fucking gun, and it looks like a fucking toy. I, I kid you not. Like, it really just looks like a toy gun. Really? Yes. It, I, can, I can see the chamber, because it's a, it's a semi-automatic, so it's got the, the sliding back chamber on the, on the top. And I can see a silver hammer. But other than that, the entire gun is pink and white. That's, why would, who even makes something like that? Well, they're made for women. I've I've seen pink guns made specifically. Why do you need a, why does a woman need a pink gun? She wants it to be fashionable. I don't know. For then then it's a fashion accessory. It's not actually a gun well, at that. Point. Not not only fashionable, but to make it more comfortable for a woman to use, because some women find them a little off putting because they're so they're so heavy, they're metallic. So then it's a sales tactic fashionable. on top of it. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. They're they're made to be a little more friendly towards women who wow. have chosen to start using guns to protect themselves so i definitely understand why it's pink but the this is actually in my hometown of greenville three year boy in greenville south carolina was shot in the head and killed on friday after he started playing with a pink handgun because he thought he was a toy why was he looking into it how did he get shot in the head investigators determined that he and his seven-year-old sister had been playing with a pink handgun when the incident occurred so the grandparent were in the living room and the seven-year-old and the three-year-old went into, they were, they were in their own house, and they went into their parents' room and found the gun. Here's the thing. We've talked about this before. There are certain procedures that when you have the gun in the house, it's not supposed to be loaded. Right. And it's supposed to be in a lockbox. Right. Some kind of safe. 
So obviously a three-year-old and a seven-year-old are not cracking safes here. It was just in some box that they could get at and they got it out and started playing with it. And either the three-year-old was looking at it down the barrel or I think they don't say it. Or did the sister shoot him? I think the sister accidentally shot him. That must be it. I think so. They don't say it in the article. I think they're trying to protect the family by not saying it. But it's it's just as easy as like a three-year-old pointing the gun at himself because he's three. He doesn't understand what he's looking at. But talk about like the the perfect situation for a three-year-old to get shot in the head. A pink gun that's not locked up. And the safety's not on. And the safety's not on and it's loaded. And it's just like, what did you expect? This is exactly why we need more gun education. And then we'll get into uh, my murderer. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say about it because I know it's going to touch upon something you're going to be like, fuck you and fuck that. I didn't choose it with that intention. Actually, the story that I'm about to tell, I I was uh, surfing Reddit and they had crime scene photos from this murder. And I didn't even know that crime scene photos existed. And if they did, I don't think I would have ever saw them. And I'll post the link on the website. But... um or in the description of this YouTube video, whatever the fuck you're watching or listening on. But um, I was pretty interested because I was like, you know, this is something that um, a lot of people know about or a lot of people heard about and not really anyone knows the truth behind it. So I hope you enjoy the story. Sounds interesting. Does the name Ronald DeFeo mean anything to you? No. No. Nicole? No. You've never heard the name Ronald DeFeo? Mm-mm. Senior, I should say. But you probably know his son, Ronald DeFeo Jr. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you this story, and then you tell me at what point you realize what the fuck I'm talking about, okay? Because you guys both know. You might not know the story, but you know the story. You've heard it before. So, Ronald DeFeo. He's a father, he has a wife, and he has five kids, right? Okay. He moves to Long Island, 112 Ocean Ave, famous, famous um, address. He moves from Brooklyn, and he worked his whole life in a Buick dealership. He was poor, and he gets rich through this Buick dealership. Um, He moves into this house, which is three stories. Actually, it's two stories, and it has an attic. Um. And it has a it's it's beautiful. It has a very small front lawn, but it has a very big back backyard and it has a boathouse. Okay. Colonial Dutch style house, right? Right next to a river. If I told you the name of the river, then you'd know what I'm talking about. But anyway, if you look at this house, it actually looks like it's looking back at you. So he has the oldest son is Ronald DeFeo Jr. His name's Butch, or they his nickname is Butch. Right. Um, The father on the outside, very loving father, worked hard for his money, finally moved out of Brooklyn into, you know, suburbs of Long Island. Um, In fact, his father argues with his mother, beats his beats his kids, beats Ronald Jr. Pretty bad. You know, Ronald Jr. Here's all the arguments. And the worst part is he's in school. He's a nerd. He's unpopular. He's fat. He's basically a Redditor. Don't alienate our Redditors. I know, I know. That's like the only people that listen to us. And and it's because we're Redditors. But um, he grows up. He actually turns into a, a, a good-looking guy. He, he he learns to fight back. Actually, I read that his father says, you got to stand up to the bullies at school. you got to stand up for yourself. But when his father, like, threatens him and beats him, he puts him down. So it's like this weird contradiction, right? So he starts fighting his dad back. And they worry so much. He ends up, Ronald Jr. ends up being more violent than Ronald Sr. So much that he makes his dad nervous. And the parents send him to therapy. Okay? And even the therapist is like, I don't know what to do with this kid. Because he's not taking me serious. Not taking, he's he's very uh, antisocial. Right? So Jr. gets into drugs. So I'll just call him Butch from now on because that's his nickname. Butch gets into drugs, spends his money on it. He gets an allowance from his father. He's 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 um he's got rich parents that pay for everything. 
his car, his everything. And he starts this is this is when things get weird. He starts taunting his dad and his friends with guns, right? So his friends go on a hunting trip with him. He points a rifle at his friend's face, watches his friend turn white as a ghost and run away. And then he goes up to his friend. He's like, what's wrong, man? What's going on? Fucking weird guy, right? Listens to his dad have an argument with his mother, goes downstairs with a shotgun, points the shotgun at his father's face and says, like, fuck you, you fat fuck. I think that's what he said. And pulls the trigger of the shotgun, shotgun jams, and then walks away like, ah, God damn it, I, I, I was going to kill you, but it didn't go off, right? Shit. Do you guys know who I'm talking about yet, or, or the story behind this? No. Okay. November 14th, 1974. It's 3 a.m. The following events I'm going to tell you take place in about 15 minutes. Okay? Butch, like I said gun enthusiast has guns in his room i think it was in a closet he grabs his 35 rifle walks to his mother and father's room while they're sleeping and shoots him now what i read was pretty graphic uh not graphic i mean detailed shot his father twice um obviously his father was laying down so he like shot him in the kidney and it went up to his chest and shot him again and the bullet lodged in his neck his mother like woke up, looked looked behind her because she was laying on her stomach. Shoots his mother, right? Now I said they had five kids. He's got four younger siblings, two brothers and two sisters. He goes up to um, the kids. He shoots this rifle off. The kids don't hear anything. No one wakes up, which is odd, right? So he goes up to his younger brother's room, kills them while they're sleeping. I, I think one of them had like a seizure or, or so, something. He shot him in the spine. And anyway, the sisters still sleeping. They don't wake up. So he goes to his sister's room, puts the rifle in the sister's head, shoots her in the head. The other sister turns the rifle, blows off half of her face. Then what he does is calmly, I, and I say, calm, I, I, I read this story earlier. So, I'm pretty much reading the story to you. But um, calmly takes a shower, takes the gun, takes the evidence, and um, puts it in like a sack or like a pillowcase or something, drives to Brooklyn, gets rid of the his bloody clothes and the rifle, drives back and goes to work. Now, he, he got a job at his grandfather's Buick dealership, so the same place that his father was working that he made all the money. Then, the rest of the day, business as usual. Does drugs, hangs out with his girlfriend, takes his girlfriend shopping. Um, and he's, throughout the day, he's telling people, hey, I can't get a hold of my family. I, I, no one's no one's picking up the phone. He calls from his girlfriend's house. He calls from his friend's house. He calls high. He calls drunk. Whatever. So he goes to the bar, and his friends are at the bar, and he goes, I, I think, guys, I think i got to break into the house because my, my family's not even picking up the phone. Goes, breaks into his house, comes back to the bar and says, I need help. My family's dead. They've been shot. Cops show up. It's a big ordeal. They're trying to figure out what the fuck happened to these people. Have you guys not figured out the story yet? No. Okay. What the hell? You won't know it until I tell you it's after the murder that, that the story that you know type actually begins. But anyway, um, so days go by. He's telling these cops. The cops show up. Um, the, the, the 911 call is actually, well, the transcript is actually online. It's, it's not interesting, but, um, it's made by his friend. The cops are like, where are you? It's actually pretty funny. Cause his name's like, my name is something, something. And they're like, did you say Charles Smith? And he's like, no, what the f I didn't say that anyway. So he's, he's stringing these, uh, cops along and the, the cops are like, who the fuck, who would, ki who has, who would kill your family? And the guy's like, I think it's the mafia because we had, uh, we had some gripes with the mafia and I guess they actually did cause in the car dealership, there's some detail they did to a, a mafia, like one of the mafia bosses that they didn't like. So there was actually a feud that they knew about the cops knew about. So they were, they believed it. So they actually like did a stakeout in the, um, they thought since he's the only one left alive of his family, the mafia is going to come back and kill him. So they did a stakeout at his neighbor's house to wait for this mafia guy to show up again. Cause they're like, we're going to take down, the crime syndicate we're gonna take down the mafia at this point um 
but they keep pressuring him. And um, he says uh, they they keep they keep asking him questions. Apparently, they do one last sweep. They didn't actually check his room for evidence because they didn't they believed him. And then one last sweep, they saw that he took the rifles from his closet and he took them out of the boxes, but he left the boxes of the rifles. So the guy, this they do one last forensic sweep, and they're like, hey, you know what? Grab the boxes, um, because why the fuck not, right? It might be important. Apparently, whoever took them gets to the, to the lab, and that's when they found out what shot or what killed the, the type of gun used to kill the family, and it was a thirty five rifle. And now they're holding these boxes that are like, oh, that's weird. I'm holding a thirty five rifle box. So they're like, wait a minute. Maybe he's fucking playing us. So they pressure him and they pressure him and they pressure him. Eventually his story changes a few times and eventually he confesses. And he says, like, once I started, I couldn't stop. And it goes to trial. And they have a psychologist on there that that kind of blows it. And, and they, they go for the insanity plea. And in the insanity plea, they say he thinks he's God. And the murders were in self-defense because if he didn't kill his family, his family would have killed him. Now... This is when the story starts that you might know. The Lutzes move in. Have you ever heard of George Lutz? That, that kind of sounds familiar. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the Lutzes move in. George Lutz has a business. I don't know what business is. I try to look for information about this guy, but he died in 06. He died in Vegas of natural causes at like 59. Um, so anyway, so he has a failing business. And he wants to move into a nice house with his wife. And apparently he looked at like 13 or 14 houses. They find this house. And it's underpriced. And it's got a boathouse. And it's on a river. And it's beautiful. Oh, fuck. Okay. Go on. Okay. You, Nicole got it. Kayla says I'm got it. So uh, I don't have to look at my notes anymore. I get to. Because I know the rest of it. Um, they find this house. And it's underpriced. So he's like they're looking he's looking at his wife he's like this is great this is this house is like perfect why is it underpriced and the the realtor says something along the lines of and i'm trying to tell you this from real life i'm try, trying i'm really trying hard to pull the actual facts out from the movie version Kalis, hint um <laughs> um i still have not got it i, don't know I know i know i know you'll you'll figure it out soon because I didn't tell you the name of the river or the town that it's in, and if I did, you'd fucking get it. I can't believe you haven't figured it out from this house. But anyway, so the realtor, I'm assuming in real life, from what I read, says to George and Kathy Lutz, look, I don't know if I should tell you this now or before you see the house, but it's underpriced because there was a murder, the DeFeo murder, which was apparently big news. Or uh, Okay. So that's why it's underpriced. So they take it. Now, what I'm going to tell you is from what I collected over the years, like just rumors or shit I've learned. Apparently, in 28 days, this is true, in 28 days, they move out of the house. They move to Kathy's like parents' house, and they claim the house is haunted. Kalis. The Amityville Horror. The Amityville Horror. <laughs> so, um... There is a lot of truth to it, and there's a lot of a lot of hoax to it. And the weird part about this story is that, as mu- I really, really, really tried to find the truth behind it, but George and Kathy Lutz stuck by that story so much that they eventually took a lie detector test in like two in the year 2000, and they passed it about everything that happened in that house, which was turned into a book. And the book was made popular because it was so strange and it was also considered a true story. So, um, anyway, they, they move in and what I think happened is that they couldn't afford the house anymore. It was still, he had a failing business. He had kids. Um, I think they were stepkids and, um, couldn't afford the house and needed a way to get out of the contract. Right. That's my, that's what personally I think. And I think I've heard that before, but I like that. I like that theory. Um, but in the movie, there's a, a classic scene where the, the priest goes in to bless the house. And then, like, flies starting attacking him. And then he hears, get out. Right? 
<laughs> and he runs out of the house and while they're all playing with the dog in the backyard or something. So it turns out the priest really did go there to bless the house, but nothing actually happened. That's one account. Then there's another source that says the priest only talked to them via phone. They had, he never actually met the family. Then there's another source that says he the priest did an interview. I think in early 2000, it was Leonard Nimoy narrated uh, us, uh, unusual stories, some sci-fi show, like sightings or something. Remember, like, Unsolved Mysteries or whatever? Mm-hmm. And uh, the priest was blurred out, but they knew it was the priest. He had an interview, that's, and he said, I actually was there, and something did happen, and I did hear say a voice that said, get out, but I don't think it was a ghost. So now there's now there's three stories about this priest being there, right? There's, I was never there, I was there and nothing happened, and I was there and I heard get out, but I don't think it was a ghost. I mean, it's fucking weird, right? Yeah. The other problem was, and I didn't really read too into this, um, but George Lutz, either, it was either before he bought the house or while he was there, there was like some neighborhood like witchcraft guy and he would he talked to this guy all the time and when they moved out they asked some paranormal um, investigator to go and check the house out and when George Lutz told the stories about what happened in that house now here's Nicole here's where I think you're going to be like oh so what who cares in hauntings there's Different types of hauntings. And I know this because I, when I was a kid, I used to think my house was haunted, right? There's intelligent ghosts. There's like there's like uh, ghosts that don't know they're dead and they just go about their lives. There's repeat of history ghosts that they just like go on and they – it's just like this one scene in history that happens over and over and over again, right? There's demons and there's um, poltergeists, right? But it never – they're never all together. You go to a haunted house and you're like, oh, you have a, an intellectual ghost. You have an intelligent haunting here. It's a ghost. It knows it's a ghost and it's fucking with you. Or you go to a house and you're like, oh, you have a poltergeist here. It's like one of the kids or one of you. Or you go and you're like, you have a demon here. You have to get the fuck out and you, you, need, you need Jesus, right? <laughs> but you never go to a house that, that you think is haunted and you go, you have everything here. And apparently George Lutz said... I'll tell you what happened, paranormal investigator. This, 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 and this. And the investigator's like, that is unbelievable because then you have every type of haunting. It, it was like so out there that even the investigator was like, I don't believe that. You don't have ghosts. Because you it's too textbook. And it's not only textbook for one type of haunting. It's textbook for like eight different types of hauntings. Yeah. So he couldn't – even the paranormal investigators like, I don't – I'm not buying it because even really haunted houses only have one type of ghost for, oh. for what it's worth. They're uh, just trying to give us nightmares. It was – it was. I mean – hold on. I said this – this is literally the rest of my notes. They took a lie detect- detector test and passed, which I already told you. And in 2006, George Lutz died of natural causes in Vegas. He also divorced his wife. I don't know when. I didn't care. I didn't expect them to be married. The paranormal investigator is dead. The priest is dead. And there's and I found it interesting, like I said at the beginning of this, Kalis, you weren't here, um, but I found it interesting at the beginning of this when I saw recently the crime scene photos of the parents uh, and the kids. Now, the only other thing I heard was that uh, DeFeo, what's, what's his name? Ronald DeFeo Jr., the ki- the guy who committed all the murders, who's still in jail and alive, um, has confessed and said, look, it actually, it wasn't just me, it was me and my girlfriend. And every time he says a story about, like, he's like, no, this is really what happened, people are like, we've heard what really happened from you, like, eight times. So no one, believe- he could literally be telling the truth now, and everyone's like, I don't fucking care what you have to say. Right. Because you cried wolf. But um, when they remade the movie, I remember reading that he said uh, he said it was me and my girlfriend. Because the weird part about all the murders was that he um, he killed the parents and no one woke up. And then he killed the kids and the other kids didn't wake up. 
So it had to be more than one person. And I, when they remade the movie, he said, I remember, I remember, I can't prove this, but I remember him saying like, it wasn't just me. There was like two or three of us and we all kind of shot him at the same time. So that's that story of the Amityville horror. Uh, Pull up the Amityville horror Wikipedia page. And that has the list of the things that they, I'm sure I, I, yeah, I've already brought it up. You did? There's like a bulleted list, right? The bullet point. Give me a couple random ones or give Nicole a couple random ones. Cause I, I know a lot of them. Green goo leaking out of the walls. Um, shit. Where is it? Apparently they had lion gargoyle things at the end of their stairs or next to their fireplace or something. And he and George Lutz attest to the fact that the lion turned real, attacked him, bit him on the ankle. And then, like, I guess turned back into a statue or whatever. I made that he, last one up. He would go down to the boathouse at about, like, 3.15 to 3.50 every night. And that was about the time that the Defoe motor, uh, murders happened. Um, let's see. the young His daughter befriended a... I made an imaginary friend named Jody. That oh, was right. like a yeah. pig. Um, I mean, I think in the movie they look up to the the two windows and they see two red eyes because that's what Jody was. It was like a pig man with red eyes or something. something like I, it's You know what? It's a genuinely creepy story whether or not you believe in it. So thanks for listening. Uh, <laughs> join us on YouTube. You don't have to subscribe, but I'd appreciate it if you listened. We all would. And... Uh, <laughs> And have a good whatever you are. What? I said Segway. Segway. <laughs> Segway out. In the middle of the street, covered in snow. Yeah, so Massachusetts. Massachusetts, not, excuse me, I said Montana. Oh, yeah, oh, did you? I did, but I, I meant I didn't Massachusetts. Even catch that. But yeah, Massachusetts, they would, uh, it's up to a year in prison if you were caught on the road in a car. Oh, my God. In Connecticut, it was a $500 fine. Unless you were in healthcare or healthcare related, like you, unless it was like, you know, a matter of life and death. So a lot of the people that I work with are essential staff because if they're not there, people get hurt, you know. So, you know, if you were caught, you'd have to explain why you were on the road. The cars that were abandoned, though, I was actually just telling Nicole this. The snow was coming down so fast that it was it was never heavy. It was never like big snowflakes. It was just really, really fast. So like. It was this flash storm that happened, and people were just – their cars were getting stuck, so they were abandoning them. And um, by the time you know they got to wherever they're going, their car was under snow. So then now you have the plows that they, – they, the plows want to plow the street, but they can't because there's abandoned cars. But you can't move the car because there's too much snow. So that's, that's why everyone's kind of stuck. One of the biggest problems was being on the road. So they're like – the governor's like, you can't drive, and if you do drive, it's a fine because you're just fucking this up for everyone else. Exactly. A year in prison, though, that's pretty hard. I didn't believe man. it. I didn't believe it. My girlfriend lives in Boston, and she said that, and I said, I, I don't think that's legal. A year in prison does not fit the, the crime. You know, it just didn't make sense. Well, I think what it was was like any executive order that's ignored is just automatically – uh, a year in prison, but if you were to if you were to go before a judge, they would bring that sentence down. I would think. I would hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Damn. Oh, fuck. That's harsh. So very harsh. Today it rained and the temperature went up. So the temperature goes up. Um. Yeah, yeah. it's not that bad. I mean, I don't. It doesn't look black. No, anything, I mean from the spill. I, I can't say that I've seen any effects of that. I mean, I would think that's close. I think I would think that's like it's it's really far south, but it's not. As far southeast as you could go in Texas. So I, I would think if you would see any, and I mean, I don't even know that if you could still go out there and how much oil is still out there, just visible. I have no idea. I usually I, think. Yeah, I wouldn't think it's still like visible after this long. But I mean, what do y'all's beaches look like? I live on the Long Island Sound. So if you think your Gulf of Mexico looks like shit, I, I, <laughs> we have, yeah. there's a shit plant next to my house. Well, not next to it, but um, actually, Nicole, the, that movie what's it called another earth yeah yeah yeah, yeah. where that's yep. that where that's filmed there's a uh um, sewage processing plant oh, so all nice. the all the shit and piss goes in there and then they whatever they do to it and they release it back into the sound and then everyone goes swimming in it i i uh, live in i live in south carolina but i'm in the i'm in what's called the piedmont of the blue ridge mountains and uh so i'm i'm in the 
northern part of the state, but um, just four hours away is uh, Charleston and Myrtle Beach. And if you want to go about six hours, you can go to some really nice beaches in North Carolina along the, the Outer Banks are really nice. Mm. So there's some nice beaches down here. Anyway, whatever. All right, let's uh, let's get to the news again. All right, are we ready? News time. Time for the news. Kalis, play the All right, guys. play the intro, Kalis. <laughs> so you guys are on Reddit, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I- it rains. The snow is melting. The rain is coming down. It is foggy as shit. You can't see too. There's there's zero um, visibility in some places in Connecticut. You you don't even know where you're going, and then you end up in a snowbank. Yeah. Two weekends in a row, I had terrible news. We got a little bit of rain down here. It's kind of troublesome. Oh yeah. You know, Putting a bad mood. I bet. Yeah. I bet. Well, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan texted me the other night and said, um, I, "I've been stuck at work for this long, you know, and I just now got home. It's snowing so much. I don't know what's going on." I was getting I was loopy, like, yeah. dude. Yeah. <laughs> it 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 rained here like two nights ago for maybe 20 minutes and then it stopped and that was it oh. it hadn't rained since it's it's supposed to rain tomorrow but it probably won't 20 whole minutes what did you guys do did you close down the stop and shop it was actually one in the morning so didn't, my oh. grandfather didn't even know it rained like i told him the next day he was like it did not rain because <laughs> it was so it was so warm the next morning it evaporated almost everything it you know you would you would not believe how dry it is down here it is very I, I hate it. I want to move somewhere where they're like Colorado is my ideal place. It just it rains in the spring and the summer, and it lightly snows in the fall and the winter. Colorado, like South Colorado, yeah. Oh, it's high desert. I guess I don't know. It doesn't. It, it's cold, but it doesn't snow. I need a, a whole beach. Lot. I always need to live near a beach. I agree, really, man. I, I I love the beach. I as soon as I get my car back, I'm going to. That's the first place I'm going. My my dog, I have a border collie, and she loves to play fetch. I love going to open bodies of water and throwing it. She, for some reason, this dog loves the water, and I just love throwing the ball in the water. She'll swim out there and grab it. She loved the beach the last time I took her. I think I've taken her twice now, and I just wish I could go more. Like, I, you know, And our Texas coast sucks, too. I mean, that's the Gulf of Mexico. It's brown, dirty-ass water. I mean, it's basically oil at this point, isn't it? Welcome to the Strange Cast, podcast made by strangers for strangers. I'm Ryan. I'm Kalis. I'm Nicole. And we're the Strange Cast. And that was our and that was our mm. intro again. As always. Sexy. sexy intro. In this episode, we'll be discussing um, some strange news, as always, and um, I have a prepared story. Just another murderer I was going to talk to you guys about um, that you've heard of before, but but you know, let's let's wait till let's wait till we get to the news after the news, and we'll we'll discuss the murderer. Well, okay. uh, first things first, what have you guys been up to? Well, I've been stuck at work for two days. Oh, you guys had like a blizzard or something, huh? <laughs> yeah. Aww. 40 inches of snow, couldn't open the door. Um, I was the only person on staff. Um, well, that's not true, but I was the only person in my with my job title um, to be on staff. For I was I went to work early at 1:30 on Friday, and I didn't leave till 8 o'clock on Sunday. That's, that kind of sucks. <laughs> Luckily, no emergencies happened, but to, you know, there was it just felt like there was no help. It, it, at one point, you're like, I think people are making up stories about why they can't come in, but they're not. It was just like streets aren't being plowed and it wasn't like oh so what you didn't get that much no i mean like you couldn't like cars could trucks couldn't get through it's when when people are like oh they didn't plow my street it's like it's not like oh my car can't make it it's no it's like they they didn't plow my street there's a wall like i can't do anything you can't drive through it yeah i guess there was a fine in montana i think is the state and if you're driving in a blizzard you'd be fined and they said they didn't implement that in new york and and you know the north northeast and so then they showed a picture of like just tons of cars hey i can't stand running into those those holier than thou uk people who talk about how shitty america is and it's like yeah you know i believe in people respectfully 
giving discourse or disapproving of, of some kind of U.S. international policy or something like that. But I hate it when they make fun of, like, internal affairs like cops or anything like that. It, it gets really, it gets on my nerves because, for one thing, they don't live here, so they, don't, they can't vote, so they have no, no, op their opinion doesn't matter to me. But here's this story that really, just really exemplifies why we are still better than our British ancestors. Are you ready? Okay. British horse meat scandal. Wow. Tesco, which is like a brand name in, in the UK, Tesco reveals 60% content in every dish. Oh my God. No, it's got meat in it and 60% of the meat is horse meat. Now, what are they, what's the, is it, what is it, steaks, burgers? What is it? Um, well, the picture that they have in this particular news article is spaghetti bologna. So it's it's like ground meat with with spaghetti sauce and noodles. But it's it's not just this. It's what the all fuck are they eating over there? What is that? I don't. It look it just looks like spaghetti to me. Okay. It's just you know ground beef spaghetti. But like it's not just Tesco. Apparently, it's a widespread problem among any sort of processed meat. So not it's not the meat that you're going to the butcher to get. You know what I mean? It's the kind of meat that goes to a, a second party and they make something out of it and then they they serve it back to the public so if i wanted if i wanted a horse burger in the uk where would i go mcdonald's or a restaurant you would get it from tesco apparently you, you would go to oh to... it's like a okay i get what you're saying now gotcha i just want to know do 